Good morning, Mount Zion. Happy Veterans Day. I also want to say thank you to all the family members and spouses and dependents. Because it takes a lot of support to service members to do what they do. You have to have someone behind them to support them. Our scripture this morning comes from Psalms 25. I'll be reading from 1 through 12. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treachery without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, my tender mercies and your loving kindness. For they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your mercies, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice. And the humble he teaches his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquities, for it is great. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Teach him. Him shall teach in the ways he chooses. Amen. Good morning, Mount Zion. First and foremost, I'd like to thank God again for this opportunity to come before you to pray this morning. And as I pray, our entire world is in trials and tribulations right now. Somebody has a burden, somebody has a sickness, somebody has a financial issue. So I ask as I pray that you put your petition out to God at the same time. We're assembled in this building right now, but I want you to assume that it is a closet. And I want you to go in your closet and you ask God what you need while I pray for us all. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father. We thank you, O oh God, for another day's journey. As we lie down last night, some had a roof over our head, some even had blankets, and some slept outside. You touched us, O oh God, with a fresh batch of mercy which woke us up this morning. Not daylight savings time, but your time. Another opportunity, O oh God, to get it right with you. Oh God, we have all fallen short of your glory. So right now, Lord, anything that we have said, done, thought, yes, thoughts of commission and omission, oh God, we ask you, Lord, for your forgiveness as only you can. Continue, Lord, to order our steps as you see fit, oh God. Down through the days, Lord, as I look back over my life and standing before your people, I shouldn't be here, oh God. But I thank God, Lord, that somebody prayed for me. Yeah. 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 
And now it's my opportunity to pray for them. Bless those who are God who are on the bed of affliction right now, Lord. Bless those, Lord, who are sick and shut in. Bless those who are behind prison walls, oh God. Lord, we lift them up, Lord, knowing that they may be locked up, but they're not locked out of your kingdom, oh God. Bless, Lord, the man serving you set in this house of Zion, oh God, for 49 years plus, oh Lord. Bless his entire family, Lord, as they continue to prop him up as you see fit, oh God. And then I'm reminded, Lord, of the story of Moses and Jephro as he told his son-in-law, oh God, you can't do it by yourself. So I thank each and every member of this house of Zion, Lord, from the choir to the pulpit to the parking lot. As we continue to do your will and your way, oh God. Have your way in this service today, oh Lord. As we celebrate Veterans Day. Those who are gone and especially those right now who are alive, oh Lord. Bless each and every family member, Lord, who stood behind somebody wearing a uniform. Sometimes it is the hardest job, Lord, than wearing the uniform itself. For they were not trained to do what they do. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for our families. We thank you, Lord, for this country, because we know freedom ain't free. Now, Heavenly Fathers, we move in the service, oh God. We would ask you, Lord, you would intercede in everyone's prayer that is talking to you right now. Lord, you know what they stand in need of. And we know one thing you can do, Lord, and one thing that you can't do. You can do all things, but one thing you can't do is fail. So, Lord, we lean into your spirit this day, oh God. Spirit of the living God, rain down in this building today, oh Lord. Touch and heal and deliver all those who stand in need of. Now, Heavenly Father, we continue to move in this service. Bless all those who may hear the sound of my voice. To a calling of you, oh God, to be their love and Savior, Lord, as you see fit. Lord, have your way in this service today. Have your way in this service today, oh God. Because we know, Lord, when blessings go up, praises come down when blessings go up praises come down lord we love you and we lift your name on high and then i would be a mist, oh god if i didn't say bless the speaker this day oh god touch him in a mighty way oh god let him fear not what would come out of his mouth but know that you are in control oh god heavenly father we love you we thank you it is in christ jesus name we pray and let the saints of god say Oh, amen.
your hands together and come on and give God some praise in this building. to lift our hands and give him glory we've come to lift our hands and give him praise everybody say we've come to lift our hands and give him glory we've come we've come to lift our hands and give him praise we've come to lift our hands and give him glory we've come to lift our hands and give him praise to clap our hands and give him praise everybody say we come to clap our hands and send up Judah we come we come to clap our hands and give him praise we've come to clap our hands and send up Judah we've come to clap our hands and give him praise everybody say we come to clap our hands and send up Judah yeah yeah Our dance and send up Judah. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Everybody say, we come to do our dance and magnify him. We come. We come to do our dance and magnify him. We come to do our dance and give him praise. Everybody say. We've come. We've come to do our dance and give him praise. Give him glory. Give him glory. Come on, give him. Come him on, give him. We've come. We've come. Lift our hands and give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise. Everybody say, We've come to lift our hands and give him glory. We've come. We've come to lift our hands and give him glory. We've come to lift our hands and give him praise.
come to lift our hands and give him glory. We come to lift our hands and give him praise. to Mount Zion Baptist Church. All our visitors, please stand. All visitors, all visitors, members that don't, hey, that's it, that's it, all members. Now Mount Zion, come on, come on and welcome our visitors. Let's show our visitors some love. We thank you for joining the Mount Zion Baptist Church. We thank you for stopping by and visiting us. Guess what? We have the greatest pastor in the whole wide world. That's Reverend Dr. Alfred Jones Jr. And we have the most gracious first lady, 
Deaconess Goldie Jones, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for just stopping by and visiting us today. Come on, Mount Zion, give it up for them one more time. We invite you to check out our church website. That's www.mntzbaptist.org. And there you will get all of our church announcements. Amen. There you will see every Sunday morning at 845. We have our Sunday school for all ages. Amen. We have it in person via Zoom and audio. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m., Reverend Mickens will meet with our young people via Zoom for prayer and praise and Bible study. And then one, at 7.30, one of our sons and daughters will lead us into prayer and prayer and Bible study via YouTube. Amen. And during, um, on Thursdays, we have our noonday prayer with Reverend Mangrum. Make sure you make one of those because I guarantee you, you will be blessed. Amen. We also have on our, on, on our website, we have our online giving button. Amen. That's where you can pay your tithes and your offering. Amen. 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 Um, the men's choir will rehearse Thursday, November the 16th at 7 p.m. They're getting ready for their annual men's day. Yes, their annual men's day. We are excited. We know that God has something great in store for you. The uh, men's annual day will take place on the third Sunday, November the 19th, during our 10 a.m. service. The guest speaker will be Reverend Gregory Spurlock of the Oak Grove Baptist Church in Herndon, Virginia. Man, we are standing by, excited to see what God has in the store for you. Amen. Amen. We also have, there will be a joint ministry meeting for all deacon and trustees on Monday, November the 27th at 7 p.m. And then We'll have our church business meeting on Monday, November the 4th at, I'm sorry, December the 4th at 7 p.m. Amen. The um, last day to sign up for the turkey baskets will be November the 13th. The last day to bring in your items for your basket will be um, Wednesday, November the 15th. Amen. We want to make sure that we act accordingly. Amen. 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 Tuesday. Tuesday. If you've not already done so, Tuesday we go to vote. We have to vote. Mount Zion, if you've already voted, check to see who hasn't voted. You can carry them to the polls. It is very important. These elections are very, very, very important. Amen. Amen. Just, just remember to vote. Just go and vote. Amen. Amen. Our youth announcements. Amen. We have Hanging with Jay. They will meet November the 6th um, and the 20th at 6 p.m. Our sister circle will meet again November the 13th. Um, Hanging with Jay are for our young brothers of Mount Zion. Amen. We are mentoring our young men. Amen. And our sister circle, we're mentoring young women. So parents, please bring them out. We have some good stuff in store for them. On November the 18th, we have a servathon activity. Amen. They're putting together um, blessing bags and they're decorating our Thanksgiving baskets. So please, parents, bring them out November the 18th at 8 a.m. There is a list of items for our Thanksgiving baskets, and we thank you in advance for what you're going to bring. And as I always say, please donate what you would want to receive. Amen. Check those expiration dates. Amen. Let's continue to pray for our sick and our shut-in. Amen. Let's pray for our first lady. It was good seeing her last week. Let's continue to pray. Amen. For our first lady, our pastor, and our first family, those that are bereaved. Let's continue to pray for them on our sick and shut-in list. Let's continue to pray for them. We also want to give a special shout-out and a thank you to all of our veterans for your service. We thank you. We wouldn't be standing here today without you, so we want to thank you. I'm done. Mount Zion is a church where everybody is somebody.
First giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life, and to the greatest pastor in the world. Pastor, I stand before you just to thank you. Thank you on behalf of every veteran and their families. Thank you for allowing us to recognize all our best. But the real reason I'm standing here this morning is also thank all those on the program. So we had a gift for all the veterans, but Jeff Bezos and Amazon failed us. <laughs> Amen. So you'll pick that up next Sunday after church. Hallelujah, somebody.
How appropriate a song. I'm before you this morning giving praise and honor to the Lord and God I serve. Thanking him for allowing me to see another day. Giving honor and praise to the angel of this house, our beloved pastor, for giving me this opportunity to be before you. And also just to acknowledge my husband, Waddell, who's in the house today. Uh, my best friend and uh, road partner. Uh, in life as I've traveled uh, this road as I'm getting ready to explain to you this morning. I stand before you as a 24-year active duty veteran in the United States Marine Corps. Hoorah, hoorah. See, I'm amongst friends, I'm amongst friends. Hoorah. And uh, that time in service, I can tell you, has not come without trial and tribulation. And I can honestly see I'm among friends and fellow service members in the, in the house today that you all can understand what I'm talking about. If we're here today and we're alive and able to open our eyes, we've been through some things. We've been through some things. We've experienced some things. And God has been our keeper and our sustainer. And so I'm here today to just give thanks and to, to one, celebrate the occasion um, and thank Thank the Lord that we do have a pastor that has a mind to just think about the, the actual members of the congregation. We are a congregation of mixed community. There are different people from different walks of life, but this uniform that those of us who choose to put on and wear, it means something. It means something. Um, those of us who have put this uniform on have given a pledge We've given a pledge up to laying down our lives for the freedoms that all of us enjoy that we really don't even ever think about. To know that even right now that there are men and women, somebody's family member, somebody's brother, sister, child is in harm's way, all for the defense of our nation. And for that, we, we have to be in prayer. For that, we have to be mindful that people that wear this uniform don't, don't do it lightly. We're not a veteran by accident. We may have joined for ver various reasons, but the decision to continue to wear this uniform and to do it proudly and honorably is not, is not one we take lightly. There's been some long nights. Uh, I'm sure those of us who've worn this uniform can think through training and coming into our organizations think through the hardships and the things that you overcame that taught you some things about yourself, that made you know that, that the kid that left home could actually become that young man or that young woman that someone could look up to, that could lead, that could guide someone, tell someone about something. We've been through some things. We've been through some things. We've been through promotions, the joys and the, 
the, the highlights that come with knowing that your service thought you were worthy of the next rank. We've been through uh, the, the downsides of having to sometimes lay down um, or to put to rest our fellow brothers and sisters. And those are people we actually know. I mean, it's not the movie, you know, that we're not saving Private Ryan. Some of us have actually laid to rest men and women that we've served with, eaten with, trained with. And mentally, that takes you someplace sometimes. And so all of our veterans require our prayers and, and thoughts and being lifted up. Because you really never know what someone has actually been through and seen. Because my uniform doesn't tell you whether I've been to combat, even though I have. Even though I have uh, been to combat. So you can't always see from the outside what's going on on the inside. And so, and that's why it's so, it's so important for us to be prayed up and to be focused on living a life that's pleasing to the Lord so that he can keep us, so that he can sustain us. And I can honestly say that he has done that. He has done that. And for all of you that are here present, I know he has done that. God is a good God and a rewarder. And beyond the medals and beyond the, the ribbons, he's a rewarder, even if it's just you kept your life. Amen. Amen. And so with that, I know we have some things uh, planned. They've got some videos for those, of, for, for those of you who submitted your photos. We want to, uh, to take a walk down memory lane, depending on how old some of these photos are. <laughs> and, and, and just to honor our veterans on today. God bless you all. Rock.
Amen. Amen. And you could really just hear and sense this sense of pride from our service members in the, the congregation. That, that pride is something that, again, you can't buy. You can't buy. And for all of us that have worn that uniform, you've earned it. So hats off, congratulations, and thank you all for your service. All right. Um, with that, we'll just at this point have all of our veterans please stand. Recognize all of our veterans. Thank you. Thank you all for your service. Thank you. Thank you. These are the giants of whom which shoulders I still stand on. Thank you. Thank you for all you've done. And just wearing a uniform and being who you are. Thank you. And then I, I, I don't think, uh, or I would be remiss if I didn't add, these are Christian veterans. Well, let's say something about everybody in the service and in the army of the Lord. And I, I talked to De Deacon Wooten. He asked me what service, what branch of service. And uh, most, most folks say, well, army, navy, and I, I wait for them to go through the list because I want them to say, I'm in the army of the Lord, but I'm in the Marine Corps. <laughs> the only time I'll be in the army. It's the only time I'll be in the army. And with that, I'm sorry that our veterans sat down, but I do also want to acknowledge our families. I know we talked about it throughout the morning that our veterans, or as veterans, we couldn't do what we do and do it well and be successful if you didn't have a home life that was intact. And so thank God to those family members that supported and stood by your veteran. Uh, you just a family can make or break your career and we know that we know that so hats off and thank you to all of our families and so we're at the stage in um, the program where we're going to recognize the youngest and then the most seasoned veteran and so with the youngest veteran I uh, will start with if, do we have any veterans in the house that are 25 years or younger any veterans Yeah, and maybe not think you're 25, but actual, like, if you pull out that driver's license. All right, so 30. Any veteran 30 years or older? All right, all right. All right. Okay, perfect. Thank God for you. God bless you. God bless you. All right, moving on to the seasoning salt, the lorries. Do we have any veterans that are 75 years or older in the congregation? All right. Okay, we got, hold up now. All right. So we've got three, three so we'll go with uh, veterans 78 or older. Veteran 80 or older. Well, come on now. Veterans 85 or older. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Veterans 88 or older. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Oh, is that two? Is that two? We got two? Well, hold on. How many numbers, Lord? 86? 80? I can't hear. What's the age, sir? How old are you? What's the age? 84? Uh, that's a lady. 85? 88? Well, right here. Hats off to you, sir. Hats off to you. God bless you. God has blessed you. God has blessed you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, so this concludes my portion of the service. And I'll just end with, um, I guess, the last part. Um, we would be remiss without recognizing those veterans who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, I mentioned earlier some of us have laid down. Um, or put to rest some of our fellow service members. And so if you would please just join me in a brief moment of silence for those veterans that are no longer here to celebrate with us on today. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll leave you with John 15 and 13. Greater love hath no man than this, and this is the word, that a man lay down his or her life for a friend. And I think all of our veterans today have signed that contract um, to do just that. And with that, we say, may God continue to richly bless you. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night. 
I mean, I, as I was listening to her, I felt like I didn't even need to get up and, and do these words for inspiration. So thank you so much for that, and thank you for the choir. I uh, just want to thank all of our veterans for your service. I know it wasn't easy, especially for your families as well. And I feel like I should thank the pastor for this opportunity. It's kind of weird to thank him for this because I feel like I, uh, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you know how I feel, but uh, <laughs> But anyway, it's all good. I'm going to, uh, for pro football fans, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tomlin my way through this. So if you're not a football fan, you know what that means. I'm, we're going to get through this. But um, by way of introduction, so for those on YouTube, this is not a sermon. So you don't have the bulletin. The bulletin says words for inspiration. The pastor saw something in me uh, to choose me to do this, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. But um, by way of introduction, I'm an Army brat, so I'm the oldest of... Um, Five kids. My, my parents were born in Mississippi, in Clark County, in Jasper County, in Mississippi. My dad was drafted in '52 and fought in the Korean War and fought twice in the uh, in Vietnam. Um, as I said, I was the oldest of five, and my uh, my brother, my brother here is a retired Marine. Him and his wife. Uh, that's the that's the only shout out for the Marines you're gonna get here. Um, my other brother was retired from the Air Force. Um, a brother-in-law who's retired from the army, and another brother-in-law who's a uh, army vet, and, and my dad was army combat engineer. So, so just want to get that straight. Uh, I'm married to uh, the lovely Vanessa Keeler, and I wouldn't be here today. One for a quick, quick story. I was telling the pastor this earlier. So when I was a, when I was a major, it was right at the height of the drawdown, and uh, my detailer had. Um, we were told to call, call Branch, you know, to see whether or not you should, you know, make the decision to take the money and get out or stay. And so I'm, so I made that call, and um, <laughs> and um, so they told me I take the money and get out. Well, Vanessa wasn't hearing none of that, <laughs> and I went, and went and saw my colonel and told him what they said. He said, "Go home." And when I came back the next morning, he said, "You stay." And I was a major then. I retired as a colonel in 2005. Won't he do it? Come, come on down. Uh, I have three grown children, uh, Adrian and uh, Billy and uh, Tiffany, and, uh, and, and five grandchildren. And so that's, uh, that's what I spend you know, a lot of my time on is thinking about them and loving on them. But, um, but anyway, so uh, let me get through this. So back in the day uh, when we used to, some of you remember, we used to do the plea for the offering. And so, you know, when I would get ready to do that, I, you know, my favorite scripture was about how the Lord loves a chip for giver, and so I would tell a joke. 
because you know trying to get people in a in a happy giving mood to, to give to the church and um, and so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna start off with a joke so hopefully you will smile at least when I finish telling the joke and when I sit down. <laughs> so I am um, I'm a reminder of three college friends who each entered the military after graduation. And after graduation, one joined the Navy, one joined the Air Force, and one joined the Marines. Uh, and they kept up their friendship throughout their uh, careers, but every time they got together, they would argue about which service was the best. And, and even after they died and went to heaven, they kept arguing about this. <laughs> so, so one day they saw St. Peter and asked him to settle the argument finally. And so St. Peter said, only the Almighty can answer such a question. And, and at that moment, a dove landed on St. Peter's sh shoulder with a note. And the note said, Men, you must stop all this arguing. All three branches are equally brave and noble, and you all serve the nation with honor. Signed, God, U.S. Army, retired. <laughs> <laughs> Dickie Martin. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I won't be long, I promise. Uh, and I know that, you know, what long means is, to, is in, behind, in the ears of the beholder. But um, although this is not a sermon, I do want to call your attention to uh, at least uh, one scripture um, in the Bible. It's in uh, Psalms 91. It's, it, and it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the follower and the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thine. So I'll stop there. Then you may be seated. Amen. God is a refuge and a fortress. All veterans take uh, an oath of office uh, when they join. An oath um, says, I, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the officers appointed over me, according to the regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Nowadays, not everyone has to say, so help me God, when they, when they recite the oath. And, and I don't want to get started on that. You know, they don't even have you know, prayer in school anymore. But, but when an individual ends their oath by saying, so help me God, they're making a promise to tell the truth or fulfill a duty with the belief that God will assist them in keeping that promise. <laughs> this year marks the 50th anniversary of the all volunteer Army. Service members, both active and inactive, volunteered for a profession where you don't have a choice where you live. Sometimes you can, you know, give your detail or your preference, but that's the military's to make. It's the same with your job, what you have, and when it's time to move, that's not your choice to make. You know, the military tells you um, when to move and where to go. But that's the sacrifice you make when you volunteer to serve. You volunteer serving knowing that it might entail lengthy separations from your family, sometimes in harm's way. Uh, it takes a special person to volunteer to serve. Young men and women volunteer to serve knowing the self-sacrifice, knowing of the self-sacrifice and conditions. Veterans took an oath and voluntarily gave up these rights to protect the rights of others. People thank you for your service knowing this. And with God's help, so help me God, veterans are, are able to sacrifice many things to become disciplined individuals capable of exercising unbelievable bravery. But with God, is anything unbelievable? <laughs> There are countless stories in the Bible of individuals and armies overcoming daunting odds with God's help. Gideon's 300-person army defeated the Midianite army of over 130,000 soldiers. God destroyed Pharaoh's ar ar army when they chased Moses and the children of Israel and had them trapped at the Red Sea. Military service is a noble profession, one that with God's help is performed for the purpose of protecting God's children and their freedom to worship him. Service to others is a Christian value. 
The core values of the Department of Defense are loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. I think we all agree these are values that we as Christians should possess. So it's not just that veterans are willing to sacrifice so much to serve, it's that veterans are people who epitomize such positive characteristics. Just like nurses, doctors, paramedics, policemen, and firefighters. The best of them has this calmness and professionalism during adversity because they know that through all things, that through Christ all things are possible. There are no atheists in foxholes. So even non-believers find Jesus because they see Jesus in others. I thank my brother for that quote. He always tells me that. Veterans know that if they have faith in God, nothing is impossible. So with God's help, our veterans have done us proud. And for that, we truly thank you for your service. Thanks and God bless. Amen. Shall we stand? Certainly we've heard a word from the Lord. You know, I have discovered that in ministry that God can use whoever he chooses to bring a word. I want to thank uh, Deacon Keela because I wanted to do something different today. I wanted someone that knew what veterans were all about. And I can look to my deacons and I can find more veterans that I can have hands to count. But truly we thank God for their service. We thank God for all that they have done for this America. They put their lives on the line. While you and I could be here at home, safe and sound. Some of them went over, did not come back. But we thank God for all of them. And even right now, there are some still over there looking out for us. And we give them recognition, we give them honor. And we give them the highest praise that we can give an ordinary citizen. So again, I say thank you, the women and the men, because all of them did their best. I'm not going to focus on just one branch of the government. But all of them, the Navy, the Marines, the Army, all of them had a major role in keeping our country safe. So on this Veteran Day, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let the church say amen. amen. Brother Deacon, let's open the doors of the church now. I'm not going to preach. The word has already been preached. Amen. And maybe there is one here today that have sat here in the veteran service that would like to surrender their lives of their life to Christ. If you're here today, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. Was the choir saying, will you come? Praise Jesus, Jesus, my son. Jesus, that's the Savior.
praise him one more time. God, we thank you today that you blessed us with something to give you. And God, we pray that you bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray.
church say amen. All right. Just a couple of things I want to say and we can go home. Let me thank uh, all of you for the wonderful anniversary that you gave Pastor and Mrs. Jones on last week of the 40 some years I've been here. Uh, last Sunday was the best that I've ever had. And uh, I just wanted you to know that. That uh, some of you still love me. And I praise God for that. And I thank you for all that you have given and I pray that you will be blessed for what you've done for your pastor. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. And I'm going to just calm down. Music, music, music. Stop, stop. I want them here. Uh, on first Sunday, of December. I want y'all to do me a favor. Y'all look at me good. Uh, my musicians have been a part of our ministry. Some of them have been with me for 49 years. Some have been with me almost 40 years. I told Tim to get these numbers for me. Some have been with me 30 years. Kenny have been with me pretty close to 30 years. And Brother Simon, uh, Simon had been with me a few years after, after Brother Beth left us. And I was thinking that, that if I could, each of you, I know we give them a stifling, but we don't pay them for their loyalty. We don't pay them for Whenever I need them, they are always here. Somebody is always here. And, and you don't know like I know how valuable they are to the church and to the pastor. So I'm going to ask each of you, if you come next on the first Sunday, I don't want you to just give it to one individual. We're going to put it all in the basket. And we're going to divide it five ways. Amen. We're going to do that. Whatever you give. Amen. Now I'm, I'm going to ask you to bring a monitor. That, I mean, bring something like this. I know some of you can buy gifts, but let's give them this. I can divide this. I can't divide a gift. So I'm going to ask all of you to bring a special gift. I'm saying, have they been a blessing to you? Come on. If they've been a blessing to you, just show them by the clapping of our hands. Have they been a blessing to the choir? And, uh, they didn't ask me. They didn't ask me to do this, but I just felt led. Because most of the time we look at the pastor but we never look at the little guys that does so much to our church. I know preachers right now are begging for musicians. And I got three right here every Sunday. And they are valuable. If you don't think they're valuable, let show up one Sunday morning and they're not here. You'll see how sad our service will be. 
So how many of you going to do that? Let me see your hand. Amen. I want you to bring a gift. Bring, bring a gift. And we're going to have a basket. We're going to put it in. And then I'm going to instruct my trustees to divide it equally. Amen. Amen. If it's unequal, come back and see me, and I'll make it equal. Amen. Amen. So we're going to do that. Do that for five of our musicians. Our guitar player, our drummer, our organist, our, 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 our piano player, our keyboard player. Amen. We got them all right here. And, 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 and we love them. And I'm not just saying it because my daughter played, because she could play for somebody else. She don't have to be here with me. But she love her daddy so that she here. And I claim Johnny as my daughter. Tim too old to be my son. So I said, Tim, my partner. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to do that on, the, on first Sunday now. We're going to do that. We're going to have a nice little basket sitting here, and we're going to put it in. And we're going to do that for our musicians. God bless you. God bless you. Now, the second thing I want to say, and then we're going home. Tuesday is voting. Amen. Now, those of you that have not voted, make sure you check before you go to vote where your voting place is at. Because they have changed the, them around. And they're doing everything they can to keep us from voting. Amen. So find out where you have to go to vote. And please, ma'am, and please, sir, go and vote. I know we're not voting for a president, but these, these, these county and state officer means much to us. And we need to do that. Amen? Amen. And we got to be careful because the main election is coming up in November. And they're trying to tell us that Biden is too old and Biden is too this and Biden is too that. But if I look on the other side, there's too much corruption. Amen. So don't let them fool you. I'm going to stick with what I have. I'm going to stick with what I have. You do what you want to do, but I'm going to stick with what I've been holding on to. Because he have not done too bad. Amen. So we're going to try our best to do what's right. Amen. Amen. We're going to do that. And uh, God will bless you real good. Amen. I'm through. We're going home now. I love all of you, even those that don't like to be loved. I love you, and like Deacon, like Deacon uh, Wooten said, and you can't do nothing about it. <laughs> Amen. I didn't know my brother was 80 years old. The, the army man right here, he 86, 88. God has been good to you, my brother. And that, that same brother fell down and broke his neck. And he was 80 when he broke his neck. Amen. And God brought him through it. And I am grateful. Shall we stand? Amen. God, our Father, we thank you today for our veterans all over the United States of America. We thank you for, the, for their sacrifices. We thank you for their contributions. God, as we celebrate veterans, let us remember that you are the greatest of all. 
God, we come to you because we realize that we have no other one that we can call on. For in the times of disappointments, in the times of trouble, in the times of sadness, in the times of whatever we're going through, we can always look to you. You're always there to comfort us. You're always there to let us know that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. We love you and we honor you. And now may the grace of God our Father, sweet communion, fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Let us all say. Have a great day.